I may have been wrong. Hi guys, Jonathan here. If you're wondering why I'm bringing you this video on Arch Resources, it's because I may have been wrong when I told you Peabody Energy was the best coal trading vehicle. Stick around to the end for more on that. Lance Colbert and Dylan Hightower recently brought Arch to my attention. Shout out to both of you. Let's take a look at how Arch compares to Peabody Energy. As we all know, the price of energy has been soaring. Electricity prices, natural gas prices, coal prices, they've all been skyrocketing. As coal prices have been exploding, US coal producers have been going along for the ride. Coal will someday be dead, as evidenced by the success of bankruptcy lawyers in the company's office. But today, it is alive and well. These companies, which were abandoned by investors during the second half of the 2010s, are now enjoying a resurgence. If you're familiar with my channel, you will know that I have covered Peabody Energy quite a few time over the summer and into the fall. However, you might also notice that I've not talked about Arch resources yet. Today I want to compare the two and see if Arch deserves more attention than I have been giving them. Earnings are up first because earnings are vital to investors and the long-term profitability and viability of any company. Coal companies have had a bad run of it over the past half decade. During the previous earnings release, Arch announced a profit while well, Peabody announced a loss. Let's dig into the details. Arch Resources reported a profit and beat consensus estimates. Say that three times fast. <laughs> For the third time in the past four quarters, earnings per share numbers were $4.92 per share compared to a loss of $1.87 per share in the same quarter last year. Revenue for the quarter was almost $600 million. Arch has now beat earnings estimates for straight quarters. Last earnings surprise was over 5.5%. The main driver for success over the last quarter was the metallurgical segment. Success has brought about praise from the analysts, including Zach's Equity Research, who has rated Arch a strong buy. Peabody, on the other hand, has been less than stellar. <laughs> BTU has only recently moved into profitability and has not delivered consistently, having disappointed during two of the last four earnings periods. Analysts don't like this. BTU reported a $0.60 cent per share loss versus the expected $0.47 cent per share loss in October. This represents an almost 30% earnings disappointment. On the positive side, Peabody did have larger than expected revenue. If we were to call this a competition, Arch has almost certainly been the dominant force in this rivalry. Arch had a consistent history of dividends from 2017 up until the early part of 2020 when they temporarily halted their dividend in order to maintain financial flexibility. Now that the situation is improving again, Arch has chosen to begin paying a quarterly dividend. The next X dividend date for Arch will be November 29th when the 25 cent per share dividend will be effective. BTU also had a history of paying a dividend before the beginning of 2020 but has not yet restarted the dividend. Peabody paid a quarterly dividend during the years of 2018 and 2019, but as stated, has not been paying since 2020. We all know what happened then. As we look at shortly, Peabody has been more interested in giving cash to their debt holders than to their shareholders. The next reason Arch Resources has been more successful and winning its competition is because Arch Resources never forgets to hit the like button. I'll let that one sink in. As both companies have relatively recently left bankruptcy protection, Arch in October 2016, and BTU in April 2017, it is reasonable to expect the financial stability of both companies is not the best. As with a lot of coal companies, the financial stability has been on shaky ground over the past decade. This has been due to the goal of reducing coal as an energy source and fossil fuels in total. However, the recent high price of coal has been music to the corporate ears of Arch Resources and Peabody Energy. As we just saw, Arch is paying a dividend again and BTU is utilizing the situation and the previous high share price to shore up the financial footing. Arch is paying a dividend, but it's only half of what they were paying in 2020. Peabody is choosing to forego paying a dividend altogether, and instead they're selling stock at the higher share price to pay off debt. Wait, what? Peabody selling stock? Did I hear that right? Taking the cash to their debt holders and paying off debt? Peabody paying off debt will help in the future, but they are doing it at the expense of their current shareholders. I'm contemplating doing a live stream in the future. Let me know if you're interested in it and what topic would be interesting to you. By now you're certainly thinking Jonathan is an idiot and he is certainly wrong. I was wrong to believe that Peabody Energy was hands down the number one vehicle for trading coal. I was wrong to think Peabody was superior and Arch was inferior. And in my defense, there's one point that I'm about to get to that shows why I believe this. The final difference between Peabody and Arch for today is the market cap. Peabody is larger than Arch resources, but no longer twice as large. When I started focusing on BTU, Peabody was twice as large as Arch resources. Because of this increased market cap, they were definitely the best choice for a trading vehicle for coal. The choice was clear because BTU had the higher trading volume, larger market cap means they had the better liquidity. Now it seems that Arch is hot on the heel of its rivals, Peabody Energy, and with a seemingly better financial positioning, may be ready to surpass and overtake their rivals. If you like this video, you'll probably enjoy this video on screen now. It's about BTU before they dove headfirst into selling stock to pay off debt. Jonathan out.